So I was just talking to your stepmom and she told me that she wants to see your alternate pick and get more smoothlier by the end of the week or else she's gonna cut off your allowance. Now I've seen that pick in hand of yours and I gotta say, it could use a little bit of work. But fortunately for you, I know a trick that you can do to get that pick in smooth as silk. Check this out. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben and welcome to the newest installment of Weekend Wank Shop, the guitar lesson series most often picked by choosy moms and stepmoms. I've seen a lot of players that have great downstroke speed but freeze up like a deer in the headlights whenever it's time to do some alternate picking. It's like they've cataloged alternate picking as being fast, difficult stuff in their brain and it really keeps them from making some progress with their shreddy stuff. On today's video, I'm going to show you guys a great way to practice in order to get over that hurdle and start making your alternate picking just as smooth as your downstroke playing. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. People are saying it's the best place on the doggone internet. That's what they're saying, I'm just repeating it. Sign up today for access to all kinds of goodies like bonus lessons, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even for just a buck a month, is going to get downloadable tabs to go along with this lesson, plus practice tracks that I made so you can get it up to speed in no time, as well as a very special bonus video that I just made for all my patrons showing you the way to master sequenced licks like ascending fours, like we're using in this video, ascending threes, whatever. Any of those really cool popular shreddy sequences, you can use this trick to master them mentally and it's going to make it way more easier when you start wrapping your mitts around the board. So don't delay, sign up today. Gearwise, gearwise for, why am I saying it like that? Gearwise for today's video, I'm playing my ancient Ibanez RG550 with Fishman Fluence Classic pickups in it, playing it through a Carl Martin Plexi Drive pedal into my Marshall 1987X Plexi, UA Aux, nothing but net. Yeah, let's hear that lick again at stepdad speed. All right, Meow, this is an ascending fours pattern in the key of A. The picking is a really important thing that we're gonna to study today, but first you gotta learn the scale pattern and phrasing idea that we're using to get through this. We're gonna be using a three note per string A major scale starting down here at the fifth position. Looks like this. And the phrasing pattern that we're going to use is ascending fours, which typically sounds like this. And so on. And descending, it would sound like this. You get the idea. Now what we're doing here through that three note per string scale pattern in ascending fours is we're playing one group of fours as eighth notes. One and two and. And then the next group we're playing the four notes as sixteenth notes. So double time. Three E and a uh, gives us that three over four kind of measure. One and two and three E and a. Uh, one and two and three E and a. Uh, one and two and three E and a. Uh, 
all the way up like that, alternating eights and sixteens the whole time. Now as you descend, it's gonna be the same idea. One and two and three E and a. One and two and three E and a. And so on. Just follow along with the tab right there and you'll be all right. But here's what you gotta really focus on. It's the picking. Now you'll notice there on the tab that I've outlined the downstrokes with the little staple symbol and I've outlined the upstrokes with the little V's, right? So you can clearly see that whenever we're playing eighth notes, we're playing downstrokes. And then whenever we switch to the double time 16s, we're going to alternate picking. Down, up, down, up. So it's down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 down. Running out of breath. Now, the thing is here, speed bursts, like what we're doing, are the ultimate way to build speed coordination, synchronization, all the good ishens that you want to add into your playing. It builds them all better than any kind of straight 16th exercise, I swear to you. Now, whenever you're practicing this exercise, this is what we're gonna keep in mind. Even as I transition into those 16s, my hand is never moving any faster. Again, just watch the right hand right there. Your ears tell you it's accelerating, your left hand tells you it's accelerating, but in reality, your right hand is staying the same speed the entire time. Now here's the thing to consider. If you can do like really fast downstroke playing, your alternate picking should be incredible. Because look at it this way. If you're doing really fast downstrokes, you're so quick already that not only can you do rapid downstrokes in a row, but you can also waste a ton of time and motion. Do you see how before every one of these downstrokes, my pick has to reset and get above the string like that? What if instead of resetting, you were just lazy and left the pick in the string? Don't do the eject and reset, just leave it in. So that way your reset strikes a second note for you. Okay, so whenever I'm doing this exercise right here and I go to the alternate picking, I'm not telling myself play twice as fast go to alternate picking. I'm not telling myself any of that. I'm telling myself, do less, get lazier. Because to me, honestly, this, the consecutive downstrokes where I have to do that reset every time, that is way harder to do than just leaving it in the strings. isn't moving any faster, I'm just leaving it in. You know anybody who's a fan of leaving it in? Tell her I said hi. I know you can play downstrokes that fast. Now just get lazy. Leave the pick in the string. Don't even think about the upstroke. Just leave that downstroke in the string. If you can do this, do this. That's like a mega death riff, right? Perfect to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So as you go through this exercise, dummy up. Don't think of it as alternate picking. Think about it as being lazier and leaving the pick in the strings. Now the thing about practicing with bursts of speed is that it can be really revealing to any flaws in your technique. Because odds are, whenever you're practicing this at a comfortable tempo, you're gonna be super relaxed playing those downstrokes. That's gonna be pretty easy for you, right? But whenever you transition to alternate picking, if you feel anything change, if you feel your hand tighten up, if you feel your shoulder rise, if you feel your toes curl, if you feel yourself hold your breath, I want you to become aware of it. And the thing is, is whenever you're going back and forth between your relaxed playing and your tense playing, relax. Here's the hard thing, relax. Here's the hard thing. You're gonna really be able to notice what you're letting go of when you go back to easy mode, downstroke mode, you know? If you exhale when you go to easy mode, that means you're holding your breath. If you loosen up the grip on your pick, that means you are tightening up. Speed bursts are so good for building speed and fluidness across your technique for this very reason. 
And this is also a really great way to find flaws in your alternate picking technique. As we all know, the hardest thing is changing strings. You know, if we all played a one string instrument, you know, everybody would be an alternate picking genius. It's the crossing strings that gets difficult. Some of us have a harder time changing strings after downstrokes, myself included. Some of us have a harder time changing strings after upstrokes. That's kind of my forte. Now, whenever you're playing these bursts of speed, it can help you find your problem areas. That way you can focus on those and improve those as well. Like, for example, myself, whenever I'm playing these descending. That's the one that gets me. Do you hear me mess up right there? Whenever I have to walk down, up, down, and then this single up strip right here. That is my weak point. It just doesn't really feel natural for me to do that inside downstroke to upstroke change. So whenever I practice this, I can see that difficult thing coming up and I can prepare for it and try to mentally get ready for whatever's going to be difficult. Think about how I'm going to approach that, say to myself, here comes the thing that I suck at and try to do better at it. And then after I do it, whether I do it good or bad, in that case bad, I have a couple notes to kind of debrief my nervous system and say, mm, that didn't quite go the way that I wanted it to, did it? And then the next time through that I do it, I can hopefully nail it like I did right there. But you're giving yourself time to digest what you just did and say if it was good or not, and say if I should make a change with that or not. Whereas when you're just going straight 16th, it can be such a struggle to stay on top of it that you're not really thinking about those changes that you're making across the strings and what was difficult, what was hard about it. You might just look at the whole thing and say it was hard, when in reality there was just one particular little string change or something that was holding you back. So whenever you practice with these speed bursts, it can help you isolate your problem areas and isolate any tension that you're building up when you transition from easy mode to fast mode. Let's play through that again together here more slowly. And what I want you guys to really focus on is that constant rate of motion that the right hand is moving at. We're never speeding up, we're never slowing down. And a great way to practice this is by making those picking motions really exaggerated. See how big I'm moving my pick right now? If you do them really teeny tiny like this, you might not feel it. But if you make these motions really large, you're definitely going to notice if you're tensing up or changing anything when you go to alternate picking. So let's make those motions big and let's play it together here. And again, feel that constant rate of speed, whether you're doing eights or sixteens here. that constant rate of speed. Make that feel really smooth. Never speeding up, never slowing down. Let's try it together one more time. A one, two, three. Make those motions really big. You can always shrink them down later. Try to take note of anything that's difficult and change that later. Always in motion, always smooth. I guarantee you guys, you practice that for like, I don't know, five minutes a day for a week, you're gonna be blown away by how much more smoothlier that alternate picking gets. You're gonna get that allowance back from your stepmom in no time. 
And then you can even use that to sign up today to that Patreon page. Look at that, one hand washing the other. We're gonna get tons of bonus goodies that are just gonna help you become a more better shredder today. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. Work on that one for a week or two and then report back to that comment section and let me know how it's going for you. I guarantee you're gonna be blown away. Thanks as always for watching. Now get away from the internet machine and go do yourself some shredding. Let's click it. More picking. More smoothlier.